The 2021 minor league season is complete, and in today's video, I'm going to look at the top 20 MLB prospects for 2021. This is just off 2021. This is not like rankings for like past years and just a, like an official race. I might do that if you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because, like I said, a lot of you that watch these videos are not subscribed. So go ahead and get your life together and hit that subscribe button, turn notifications, and leave a like. But, yeah, we're going to look at the top 20 MLB prospects, like I said, if you do want to say, like, a full list um, of not just 2021, because this is based off only one season of 2021. We're going to start from 1 to 20. So, let's go ahead and start at number one. The best prospect this year, I think, was Bobby Witt Jr. of the Kansas City Royals, just in my opinion. Bobby Witt Jr. had a phenomenal year between AA and AAA this year. Had a great year with 33 home runs, 95 RBIs, and a 298 batting average. He had a great year. I think this was the best in all of minor league baseball and could be considered as possibly the best prospect in all of minor league baseball. Bobby Witt was the 2019 second overall pick. And this is a guy who I think could break um could could break camp at on the Royals opening day roster next year. He is a really, really good player, and he has had a phenomenal year in the minor leagues. My number two guy is Julio Rodriguez of the Seattle Mariners, an outfielder. He had a great year, too. Um, this year was a really great year for him, and I don't think enough people really notice how good of a year he's having with a 340 or hat with a 347 batting average with 13 home runs and 47 RBIs. This guy had one heck of a year this year, and Julio Rodriguez just hits the cover off the ball with a 347 batting average. Could be compared to somebody like a Juan Soto just from the right side. He With that 347 batting average, the Mariners signed him on July 2nd of 2017. Um, and, yeah, the Mariners definitely got a good um, international signing there. At number three, this is one that not a lot of people saw coming after a down 2019 from this player. And another Kansas City Royal, MJ Melendez. MJ Melendez has had a great year. He was the 2017 second round pick by the Royals. And by the way, speaking of the 2017 draft, make sure to go check out my redrafting the 2017 MLB draft video. But this year, 281 batting average, 39 home runs, 91 RBIs. And, yeah, he had a phenomenal year. Now, they think he's going to be more of a third baseman in the future just because Salvador Perez is kind of already there at the catcher position. But this guy is a great hitter with good power, and he has a good arm. This guy could definitely play third base if he wanted to. And, um, I mean, wow. MJ Melendez has had a great year after what I said was uh, he could probably say this to himself that it was a terrible 2019 season. My fourth prospect is another catcher, and that is Adley Rutschman of the Baltimore Orioles. A lot of people now consider him as the best prospect in all of baseball. He was between AA and AAA this year with 23 home runs, 74 RBIs, and a 283 batting average. He hit really well this year. Rutschman did. He was the 2019 first overall pick. And Rutschman is... Um, Rushman was some somebody who in that 2019 draft, they knew he was going to be the first overall pick. Like There was no questioning of whether he was going to be the number one overall pick, even with Bobby Witt in that draft. And number five of the Detroit Tigers, I've got Spencer Turkelson. He was just the first overall pick back in 2020, and this guy's already in AAA and could possibly make their team next year. Between high A, double A, and triple A this year, a 266 batting average with 28 home runs and 87 RBIs. This Detroit Tigers future is bright, and Spencer Turkelson is a big part of that. Whether he's a first baseman or third baseman, who cares? This guy is a really, really good player, and Spencer Turkelson comes in at number five. At number six, I've got Grayson Rodriguez, another Baltimore Oriole. Grayson Rodriguez has had a phenomenal year this year. He's currently in double A. And he has a 9-1 record this year with a 2.36 ERA. I mean, just a phenomenal year between high A and double A. And he was not in high A ball for very long. Just getting five starts, 3-0 with a 1.54 ERA. 
Had a great 2019 too with a 10 and 4 record with a 2.68 ERA. This is a guy that's going to be the future ace of that rotation, and he was. And the Orioles took him 11th overall back in 2018. Next up at number seven, I've got Anthony Volpe of the New York Yankees. This guy had a big coming out party in 2021. We knew he was a good prospect, but boy, did he have a coming out party. We, he was the 30th overall pick in 2019 by the Yankees. And in um, in 109 games this year, 294 batting average, 27 home runs and 86 RBIs. That is a monster season, whether you're in the major leagues or the minor leagues. And Anthony Volpe is the future shortstop of this team. A lot of people want to talk about them getting Trevor Story. No, Anthony Volpe is going to be – the future shortstop of this team. Next up at number eight, I have Nick Prado of the Kansas City Royals. Another Kansas City Royal on this list. A lot of Royals were very good this year. Nick Prado is ranked the number 66 prospect on MLB.com, and he's currently in AAA ball as well, and he has had just as good of a season, arguably, as MJ Melendez or Bobby Witt Jr., also Kansas City Royals, guys. But between double-A AA and triple-A this year, 261 batting average, 33 home runs, and 90 RBIs. This guy had a down in 2019 as well, but boy, as he showed out in 2021, and that's the reason why they're not going to bring Carlos Santana back to their team is because they've got Nick Prado, who is really, really good and is going to be a great left-handed bat in that lineup in the future. Next up at number nine, I've got Marceau Luciano of the San Francisco Giants. Marcel Luciano is currently in high A ball with the Giants, um, and he's going to be up pretty soon, ETA of 2023, and he's the number five ranked prospect on MLB.com with a 258 batting average this year, 19 home runs and 71 RBIs and 106 games played. Um, yeah, Marceau Luciano is the future shortstop of this Giants team. And he had a really, really good year in the minors. At number nine, or at number 10, Gabriel Morano of the Toronto Blue Jays. This is a guy who wasn't talked about a lot before the season either, but really showed out in 2021. He's already in AAA um, with a AAA affiliate, the Buffalo Bisons. And he's had a great year. 383 batting average. Yeah, listen to that again. A 383 batting average with eight home runs and 45 RBIs. Now, the power is not there, but who cares when you're hitting 383? Wow. 383 um, is ridiculous. Uh, and this is a guy who technically could be the starting catcher next year for the Blue Jays. Gabriel Morano is ranked number 33 on MLB.com and has an ETA of 2022. Next up at number 11, I'm going to go with a person that's already made his debut for the Rays, but that's Shane Boz, right-hander. So Boz, like I said, has already made his major league debut, but he still counts as a prospect because he spent basically the whole season in the minors. So this year he, he was 5-4 and four with a 2.06 ERA between AA and AAA. They finally called him up um, to get a start versus the Blue Jays, and he, and he looked very good. He um, gave up two home runs, one really not so good pitch, but he he made a lot of quality pitches and he got the win in five innings. Um, but Shane Boz was one of the better prospects in minor league baseball this year, and yeah. Next up at number twelve, I feel like is one of the more slept on prospects, and that's Riley Green of the Detroit Tigers. He's also in AAA right now with the Tigers, and he spent his year in AA and AAA. A 296 batting average, 23 home runs, and 81 RBIs for him this year. And, yeah, Riley Green, like I said, I think he's one of the more slept-on prospects. MLB.com has him ranked at number seven. But the Tigers organization, when a lot of people think about it, it's Jackson Job, it's Ty Madden, it's Spencer Turkelson. They need to give more respect on Riley Green's name. At number 13, I'm going to go with another Toronto Blue Jay, Orlavius Martinez. Martinez is another guy who has really had a great year this year, and I know I'm saying that with every player, but it's true. This year in high A ball, 28 home runs, 87 RBIs, and a 261 batting average in 98 games this year. He's a shortstop slash third baseman. Now with a crowded infield, the Blue Jays have. It's uncertain what his future is going to be, but still, Orlavius Martinez 
had a very good year in high A. He's not going to be up to 2023. His future depends a lot on what they do with Marcus Simeon in the offseason. So, yeah. Um, next up at number 14, Francisco Alvarez of the New York Mets. Francisco Alvarez is a guy a lot of people are talking about. And rightfully so. Alvarez has spent the whole year in high with the Brooklyn Cyclones. And he has 24 home runs, 70 RBIs, and a 272 batting average. He's went off this year in high A. He was signed on July 2nd of 2018 um, by the Mets. And he's ranked the number 10 prospect in all of um, in all of baseball by the by MLB.com. So very good prospect. He's a big part of the Mets' future. At number 15, um, we stay in the NL East for Max Meyer. Max Meyer, I think, is the best prospect in the Marlins organization now. I mean, MLB.com has him ranked third. I don't agree with that at all. He was the third overall pick back in 2020, and he has had a great year. He just got a promotion to AAA Jacksonville after spending basically the whole year in Pensacola. And he went off yesterday in his first start in AAA with a – with five innings of two hit one run ball, which was just a home run. He was six and three this year with a 2.41 ERA and 20 games started 20 games overall And Pensacola six and three with a 2.41 ERA. And yeah, Max Meyer is one of the better prospects in major league baseball. I think he's the best prospect in the Marlins organization. Next up is another guy that has been called up by the Rays, but still counts as a prospect. And that's Josh Lowe. Um, of the Tampa Bay Rays. He currently has got sent back down to AAA, but boy, has he had a great year in AAA with a 293 batting average, 21 home runs, and 75 RBIs. We've seen this from Josh Lowe before, but not quite this. Like, we've seen the power before, but boy, as he went crazy this year. And, um, yeah, I mean, Josh Lowe has had a very good year. The Rays... Another guy that they should at least think about calling up, give him a chance possibly in the last few days of the season here. Next up at number 17, another outfitter, Zach Veen of the Colorado Rockies. Veen has had a great year in just A-ball, um, but his A-ball team has done pretty well this year, um, making it to the low A West Championship, I think it is. But he's had a 301 batting average this year with 15 home runs, 75 RBIs, and 36 stolen bases. Uh, in 106 games. Zach Bean, I mean, his stats are only going to get better in Coors Field as well, which is scary. Zach Bean um, was their eighth or ninth overall pick last year in the draft, and boy, has he been a great pick so far for this team. Number 18 is Nick York of the Boston Red Sox, another pick from last year. York was a guy that coming out of the draft, not a lot of people were a big fan of at all of why the Red Sox went with him. He's had a great year this year, 325 batting average, 14 on run, 62 RBIs. Between low A and high A this year, finished his year in high A Greenville. And 97 games this year, 14 on run, 62 RBIs, 325 batting average. Really had a great year. Does not strike out a lot at all. Another Nick Madrigal type of player, Whit Merrifield type of player, one of those players that just never really strikes out. And, yeah. Nick York um, is the future second baseman in Boston. Next up for the Pirates organization, one of their better prospects, and that's Quinn Prester. He spent the whole year in high A this year with a 7-4 and four record with a 3.04 ERA. And he's had a really good year, Quinn Prester has. Um, he was the 18th overall pick back in 2019. And this is a guy... That's going to be up pretty decently soon. They're saying about 2023 on MLB.com. And he's ranked the number 50 prospect on MLB.com. And he has had a phenomenal year. He's going to be moving up to AA next year and could even maybe get up to AAA. And the final guy on this list at number 20, I think was an underrated one, another 2020 draft pick. And that's Jordan Walker of the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, where his future stands, in St. Louis, it's unknown because you've got Nolan Arenado, you've got Nolan Gorman, you've got a bunch of players there. So that's unknown. But in 82 games this year between low A and high A, 14 home runs, 48 RBIs, and a 317 bag out. Definitely one of the more slept-on prospects. He's ranked as the number 58 prospect on MLB.com. 
I personally think that he's, he would be a little higher in mine. Jordan Walker has had a great year. Yes, his future is uncertain, but boy, did he have a great year between low A and high A. And yeah, like I said, 2020 first round pick, 21st overall. And yeah, so yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. I'm going to go over the list again here. At number one, Bobby Witt Jr. At number two, Julio Rodriguez. Three is MJ Melendez. Four, Adley Rutschman. Five, Spencer Turkelson. Six, Grayson Rodriguez. Seven, Anthony Bolt. Eight, Nick Prado. Nine, Marceau Luciano. Ten, Gabriel Morano. Eleven, Shane Boz. Twelve, is Riley Green. Thirteen, Orlavius Martinez. Fourteen, Francisco Alvarez. Fifteen, Max Meyer. 16, Josh Lowe, 17, Zach Bean, 18, Nick York, 19, Quinn Prester, and at 20, Jordan Walker. So, yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. Like I said, make sure you leave a like, subscribe.